Well, hello there, trombone children. This is Dr. Jeff Phillips, and it's 2001, and I'm going to go through the Mid-State um, Tenor Trombone excerpts for 7th and 8th grade. And while you might find some other videos of people playing these, saying this is how they are, uh, well, hopefully I'll do that too, but um, I kind of approach these from a different viewpoint, having listened to these over the years, is I'm going to go through them little bit by little bit and tell you all of the things that you might play wrong, or at least that I've heard wrong over the years of playing them and, uh, well not playing them, but of listening to them in auditions. So this first one, uh, the first excerpt, which is number two. Um, legato, all of your excerpts, there's usually gonna be one of one style and one of the other one. This first one is the legato etude. Uh, you wanna pay particular attention to your key signature. Um, especially seventh and eighth grade trombone players, hate to stereotype you, but a lot of you really like to play E flats and A flats. And please don't do it in either one of these excerpts, uh, except, well, it's not marked in any. So, so don't do that. Okay, so uh, A naturals, E naturals, second positions. Um, starting right off, if you have instrument with a valve, then you've got going from six to uh, from the C to the A, you could either go or you can just keep it in six. So you've got a few options there with or without the valve. Um, here's something you could do in the first part. Uh, a lot of this could be done in all in basically six position except for the G in this opening phrase. Um, you do have to make some slight slide adjustments for um, for intonation, but throwing this out there, so for some of you, you might like to do it this way. are and you but if you do that you really really need to pay super attention to the intonation especially on the C and where that is in sixth position if nothing else you might do it just for just for practice to practice playing those notes out there because a lot of times people don't do that and it's kind of handy to know that they do exist beyond fourth position plus when people do get a, a valve they tend to never go past fourth position for pretty much anything. So that's a good exercise to make you do that. Uh, if you're going from sixth to second for those notes, a lot of this whole opening can be done um, using what we call natural slurs. So you don't need to tongue everything. Okay, that a natural slur is like a lip slur, but you're moving the slide. So it's all here. It's not saying, da or anything. So if I just move the slide and do a natural slur, uh, I can get things like this. All of that without ever tonguing. Now I would have to tongue when I go from the A to the G if I do it from second to fourth. Don't want that. phrase there all I have to articulate for and this goes whether I play the C in sixth or first with the valve then um, all I have to do is uh, articulate slightly for the G in fourth position now one thing to practice getting this smoother this is not how to play it but a way to practice getting it smoother is to play everything without tonguing at all just to make sure you've got it all on a real steady stream of air. And again, I wouldn't, don't perform it that way because we don't want to smear from 
from A to G, but lightly articulate there. But when you do that, ideally you're gonna play this at a speed, not the first time, just play it slow first until you kinda of get it under your belt. Um, but you're gonna play this at a speed where you're gonna be able to take all of that in one breath. Now it's marked piano, but you don't wanna start so soft that you're afraid something is not gonna come out. So take a good breath and play comfortably your piano, your beginning dynamic there before you do the crescendo in the third line it is based on whatever comfortable sound comes out. So nothing is worse, trust me, than, oh, I've got to play this really soft and going, and then nothing comes out and then you'll panic and it's downhill from there. So take a good full breath, play comfortably, and then when it gets down to the third line, you're supposed to do a crescendo. You just go from there. Okay, that'll give you a lot better start. Okay, now if you look at the notes in the first phrase, that's everything that's under the first curved line, and then on the ones under the second one, they're almost the same. The rhythms are a little different. You go instead of having a, a half and a quarter, sometimes you have a quarter and a half. But let's look at this. Even in the, the last measure of the first line, and it starts back the same basic note. There's that G again. So, in the first eight measures, we've got this uh, basic four bar repeated phrase. Now, what I do hear a lot of people do when they play this sometimes is they will chop that little eighth note off and it's way too short. And at the end of the first line, they'll go. It's an eighth note, so. Yeah, you can take a breath there, probably should. But make it an, a, a breath on the end of the beat so that you don't cheat that note and make it too short. Okay? It's an eighth note with an eighth rest. It's not a 16th or a 32nd note. So be, be a little more graceful when you end there. If you just take a gentle breath on that eighth note, you'll be right in time and you'll be able to make the next phrase and it won't be too short. So, second one I probably should have taken a little bit bigger breath it would also be good to maybe add some interpretation as far as what should I do dynamically within that phrase um, yeah. <laughs> sort of kind of into the middle, then taper back down. Do you want to follow the, the notes as they go up, crescendo it? You'll have to kind of see what works for you and what you think sounds best. Um, but try to avoid just playing, let's see if I can play this. Oh, I like it. whatever you think boring is. Um, so, you know, feel, you can do that. That's on one of the bottom categories of what you're graded on, what you're evaluated on. It says musicality. So, did you just play it like that? Or did you add something tastefully that fit the music, all right? And hopefully you've got a teacher or a band director that can maybe help you with that and they that you can play it for them and they go, what are you doing here? That sounds awful. And um, you know, they'll, they'll kind of guide you on that. Okay, the next little part, um, we've got a dotted eighth, sixteenth on beat three in the uh, second line, next to last measure. So, but taking that pickup there. Okay, couple things. 
you've got the slur and you've got two of the same note. You've got a 16th note G and in the following measure there on the end of the second line, you've got a quarter note G. You're gonna have to re-articulate using a legato, a da articulation towards the of your mouth on that second G. So that they're separate because we don't want those aren't tied. So now that la those last two notes we played, G to E, another natural slur. You don't have to tongue those. It's like doing a lip slur going up. And if you've got trouble doing that, then uh, work on a lip slur pattern like. That kind of thing. And that'll help you get that interval a little better um, in, in that passage. Okay, now the, the next last measure in the second line, you're going to have to articulate each one of those notes. A natural slur. Okay. So another way to again to practice this is to not tongue anything and that way you can identify where it is that you're going to have to use a little articulation. Okay so then I hear that figure out where which notes do I have to articulate slightly so that I um, I, I don't get a smear okay next little phrase okay so again that one start it the same way first couple times you play it figure out well, where am I smearing and then all right if I've got a smear there that's where I need to articulate slightly with that legato articulation make sure we got that B natural there at the beginning of the third line Not, heard it before don't do that okay uh, it's third to fourth for the B natural okay uh, there's another eighth note there in the uh, second measure of the third line. Eighth note, eighth rest. That's another one that folks will clip sometimes. Don't do that. Okay. All right. And then dotted eight sixteenth there. Ta 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 ti da. Three and a three and a one. Now you've got a breath mark that's written in the music. So in the, in a case like that, your breath mark, is, it becomes part of the music. It's part of the phrase. Um, you wanna be careful, kinda of like with those eighth note, eighth rests, that you don't clip it off and make it too short. We don't wanna hear. That's way too short. Well, it's got a breath, I gotta take a breath there. Relax it, you'll be fine. Now, I did slow down there on kind of on purpose because I want to emphasize to you that you play G, F sharp, then F. Okay? So G, F sharp, then F. Uh, there at the, uh, the next to last measure of the whole thing. Now, you can go back to, if you have a valve, a F valve, you can go back to first position uh, and play that C there at the end there, or you can go out to six, either one. I probably would, personally, I would play it in six, whether I have a valve or not. Uh, I just think it keeps, you're going out with the slide anyway. Uh, F, E, D, G, C. One, two, four, four, six, instead of one, two, four, four, <coughs> back to one. That kind of gives, I mean, you can do it either way, but for me, it would be smoother just to play it in sixth. Um, be very careful on the G to F sharp. You don't want to go out 
too far where your F sharp will suddenly become an F. And um, then those notes sound alike and you're not really sure why that happened and get all confused. Okay, so watch out for that. Okay, uh, so that little crescendo that's written there in the end. Uh, <laughs> there at the end I think that sounds good you might not like like to do that but I think that's definitely something that uh, I would do and again especially after you take that that graceful breath dee da dee dee da dee da 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 okay uh, last little thing kind of uh, put a little icing on the cake here even though it's all legato you still want to put a little emphasis on anything that is on the beginning of a measure okay that that'll go with any song we're playing um but especially uh especially this one kind of gives the the whole thing direction and and it it uh it, it shows some again good musicality there at the end let me show you a couple examples like <laughs> between the uh, D and the G, the last three notes there. Anyway, um, if, you need to, if you need to take one, figure out where to take one, plan it and do it all that way all the time so that you, you know, a, a breath breaking that is better than doing something like Oh God, because you ran out of air. Okay, so that's kind of all the Good little helpful hints on the first excerpt. The second one, of course, is going to be the more technical. I'll put that in one finger quotes because I'm holding on the horn with the other. Uh, key signature. I've heard this one played with flats before. It, it doesn't sound the same, so don't do that. All right. Uh, first little part. Um, this rhythm is, is sometimes misplayed uh, even by more advanced students in, in high school and even college um, they'll play the 16th notes too too quickly it'll be like da 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 no think about 16th notes one e and a two e and a one and a two and a one and a two in fact you might practice it that way going instead of the eighth note double the eighth notes and play it Okay, and then once you kind of get that rhythmic aspect in your head, play it like it's written, but think those sixteenths. Okay, um, I'm going to get the tempo. That, that, I mean, it says ninety-two to one twenty. That's a big, big uh, variation right there. Um, find a tempo that's comfortable that you can play the things that are in like the third line and they're not messy and that's the tempo you start with anyway um, we'll get probably back to that in a second so I prefer to play the eighth notes a little bit lighter so instead of this more okay and that will also enable you to get it faster eventually you know kind of give it a little bounce to it in complete contrast to the other excerpt okay so c e g and c you hear that arpeggio there uh, 
uh, see our page up. Okay, starting in measure three, we're on a B natural. I would play those Ds in first position. Um, just because you're going up to the second and then you're going back down. D, C, okay? So sometimes, uh, you know, I, I'm all over students and there are cases, a couple of spots in here where I would uh, highly suggest you play the uh, Ds above the staff in fourth position. But in that case, I would play them in first because of the direction your slide's going, okay? Uh, you don't wanna make awkward, quick changes that'll kind of get in the way you're playing, so. Okay, so those are all articulated do, 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 lightly there. The other thing is if I'm playing my eighth notes, and here's the thing, if you do play your eighth notes light in the first couple measures, then you want to play them the eighth notes the same way in measure three. Instead of da, 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 all eighth notes the same way. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Okay. Um, another reason I kind of like to do that is because of what's coming up next. But let's get back through that um, uh, first first line. Now, again, dynamically, you can do some stuff there where you kind of crescendo up to the highest note. Do you come back down? See what you think it sounds like. Okay, the next two measures I have heard exploded because uh, you know, students go, it's got an accent, I've got it really tongue it hard. And they go, no, no, no. It's just an accent, it's not a slap, okay? So, uh, a little bit stronger articulation, but a little more, a little more air, a little more, uh, just a little more of anything, uh, but, not, okay, so um, you want to put the emphasis on beat two, da, 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 de, da, 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 de, da, instead of da, 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 okay, that's why it's there, so instead of, okay, so accent doesn't mean hurt, Men, women, children, dogs, cats, babies. Okay? Just a little bit more. All right, so then I get to measure three and a lot of fourth position stuff here. And again, I'm playing, if you're playing your eighth notes, like I'm playing them, uh, with a little, a little lilt, a little light on them, um, then you wanna play the eighth notes there in the fourth measure of the second line the same way so that we don't mix them up. All eighth notes are gonna be done the same way as long as they're marked or not marked the same way. So, you don't want or, you know, Why not play those eighth notes long and the other one's short? You know, um, not how I would play it personally, but I wouldn't count off if somebody did that that way as long as they did them all that way, okay? So just you know, decide what you think sounds best, what you wanna do, and do them all exactly the same way. That's the key. Okay, moving on, the last measure of the second line on the uh, E naturals, A naturals. Oh my goodness, look at that little tic-tac-toe, that hashtag there on that G. G sharp, inharmonically, is A flat. So, um, there's a B natural right there. Got it? And then on the third line, on the second measure, there's a slur there. Natural slur. And then the octave, the E, you hear the low E, so you hear what the top one's going to sound like. That octave E, um, you articulate. Okay. So when I'm doing things this way with the light eighth notes and then I'll, I get to a slur, it really makes that slur kind of pop out a little more. 
and you can tell the difference in the articulation. Anyway, all right, so again, just key signature, G sharp, third position, then you've got B naturals. So beginning of the third line. Okay, this next one. This is a spot um, right through here. I would play these uh, Ds in fourth position. Kind of a flat fourth. You don't have to use your ear for that. So, let me show you. So, I'm in second for the E. So, there's my D. If you're, if you're not used to playing it there, play it in first, find it in fourth. You know, find exactly where they sound the same. Okay. Then you've got C, D, C. And if you do that, if you play that C to D, if you go three, four, three, then you can make the D a natural slur from the C. If you play it in first, you're going to... And I've heard that before a lot. Don't like it. Okay, but if you play it in fourth, natural slur, then you lightly articulate the, the C and the B natural. So you've got three, four, three, four, two. And that's moving a little bit, not this stuff. So, mm -hmm. okay. so that whole thing that on the third line there is where, and actually coming up here in a second, I will play the, uh, the D's in fourth position. So, This next one, if you play in first, then you're going to have to articulate going out. This is the D in the next measure because you've got Fs. If you play playing in first because you're playing F and then D, and you can do that, but then you have to articulate to be natural. If you play the F in first and the D in fourth, then you can natural slur down to the B. Kind of a choice you have to make. <laughs> If you're not really used to playing the D's in fourth position, that jump there might throw you off a little bit. Um, but just make sure you use a legato tongue there and you don't go. No. Okay. And then the next measure, E naturals. And again, there's accents on those. But that just means you put the emphasis on beat two, um, not that you hurt anybody. Now, this next to last measure, oh, this gives people fits. It's not that hard. Okay, B natural, E, D sharp. Where's D? D is in fourth. You're gonna sharp it, you're gonna raise it, it's gonna be in third. Same thing, inharmonically, as E flat. Okay, so, B, E, D sharp, third, back to E. So practice going. Okay. So you get that down, and then you go to the C and the B natural and A. Note in the next last measure and the 
fourth measure from the beginning, all dee da 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 light. There's one spot in here in the third line where you go dee da da da. We talked about that. But my tendency will read to you're going to want to go right, and add extra slurs in there. No, no extra slurs. Okay, right, so. Uh, that's just some, some things to look at. You might notice in the end of the second line, uh, you, you have a crescendo written under that one measure. Dum -ba -ba -bum -ba -ba -bum -bum -ba. And I brought it back down since it's the same type thing, starting on an E instead of a D. So I kind of started it over again. Throw that out there for your option and entertainment. All right. So that's some things to uh, look for as you work up these two etudes for the 7th and 8th grade trombone auditions for our mid-state bands here in Tennessee. And if you've got any uh, questions, feel free to uh, get in contact with me. Uh, your band directors will know how to do that if, if you can't figure it out. But uh, you can remember this. You can always just go to my website and contact me there. It's easy to remember jeffphillipstrombone.com easy because that way I can remember it all right good luck with your auditions uh, hope this video helped you as you prepare bye